Hey folks, this is Noble Rambler, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Banished. This episode is going to have a rather unique start to it, because I've got some explaining to do. Things have gone a little bit awry at Noble Landing. Um, got to the end of episode one, actually recorded episode two, and was in the process of editing it when I got a note from Sabuma28 that made a just a little observation that kind of stopped me in my tracks. She, she had noticed that the uh, in episode one, there weren't any sandstone roads. And I read that and I thought, no way. <laughs> I, I went back in my memory and I thought, okay, I went to Colonial Charter's website and I downloaded 1.61. I extracted it. I moved it into the mods folder and jumped in, found a new seed and found this map and thought this would be a great one to use and and started recording and only afterward I realized I never went into the mod folder and actually checked yes for 1.61 so that was actually 1.6 that I recorded episode 1 in so I thought okay we can fix this you know I don't want to destroy the original episode and throw it away and start over because there were so many comments and views already there so I figured I would just create a brand new, well go into 161 and recreate episode one so that it ended at the same point. So I did that. With and everything came out exactly the same, with the exception that we got pigs instead of leghorns. It, uh, I restarted that ten times. It would not give me leghorns. It was pigs every single time. So something changed in the way the seeds work, but the map is the same. And I did a few other little things like I aligned the uh, the crop over a little bit so the road would go through and move this down one space so this road would go through, things like that. But otherwise it was the, the exact same layout. <clears throat> Turned it off and the next day I figured I would record episode 2 in 1.61 on a map that looked identical to this. Only it wouldn't load. It just blew me away. I I have restarted my computer so many times in the last 24 hours. 1.61 will not reload my save from 1.61. And I tried it in multiple, you know, combinations. I made sure I didn't accidentally record it in 1.6, so I tried to reload it in 1.6 and that crashed even harder. And it got to the point where it managed wouldn't even turn on anymore. You know, it just it just immediately crashed. So restarted again, and I'm I can't find anything online that talks about 1.61 crashing, but 1.61 will not restart my 1.61 save. So I think we are going to do noble landings in 1.6. There weren't a lot of changes between 1.6 and 1.61. There was the addition of the uh, of the ability to brew coffee, and there was the sandstone road, and there were a lot of, of fixes. But there weren't a lot of new buildings added. So it looks like Noble Landing is going to be recorded in 1.6. So I went through and changed thumbnails and changed descriptions and videos and all of that sort of stuff. So that's where we are. We are we're gonna have an episode one with a a splash intro of 1.61 and nothing I can really do about that. Uh, YouTube doesn't let you go back and replace a video for fear that you're going to replace it with something that's completely out of context and be inappropriate. So, that's where we are. We have a modified series. We are back in Colonial Charter 1.6. We are doing uh, the town of Noble Landing in the um, Marshes map. And there is one particular challenge I have to overcome. The little intro video that you saw as, as the game, as this video started, I recorded after I recorded episode two so that I could have more town buildings here and a little more excitement to see rather than just this little group right here. So I need to recreate this episode to kind of end like the original episode two ended. <laughs> oh, what goes on in the background of creating a YouTube channel. Now you get a little, little taste of what happens when things go wrong. So I'm going to run this at slow speed for a while while we think about what I think about what's going on, what has to happen and what not. A little more chance describing things and and explaining things. But one thing I did fix and I, I just realized I still have the ability to do that right now. 
let's go through this is cucumbers one person running it and labor pickup so let's delete this one so that I can let's see farm that one I'm gonna to touch this right up against it um, one space in will be fine but I want that road to go through in fact let's grab it from this direction I want it right there so that was a 7 by 16 too bad I can't get an 8 because these fields are a little bit a little bit small um, well okay let's go ahead and reset this right now that's the reason I did it because it uh, there we go because it would allow me to immediately oh I took out one too many all right one two oh there's three there we go now we're happy that's that's the, the orchard is the same as the crops three people three fields all right um don't know what i was saying oh these are a little bit too too uh, small they they um um they harvested way early last year and we even started late so if we start at a normal time this will be done middle of summer so they need to be a little bigger for these particular crops but I think we're going to take this area right here and strip it out and make this our farming area and we'll maintain the uh, the logging over here and might even kick over and put logging over here kind of like that um, so a lot of what I'm going to be doing this time is what would have happened if I had completed editing that episode 2 that I'd already recorded so we can come up with the same ending point so we have the same so this the splash intro actually looks like the town that we're that uh, we're, we're creating from here um, so let's figure out what we're going to do this time I'm trying to re I have been a little flustered the last few days and trying to remember just what we ended with on episode one here so we've got our our farming or our uh, logging community over here um, comment came in from uh, KLCB soft just kind of uh, talking about the herbs and do you want the herbs in an in an area where you're going to be cutting trees down originally there was kind of a rumor that went around with banished about old growth forest and the concept that that as long as the trees are the original trees then the herbs will grow the best and then that kind of morphed into what is more reality of um, not so much original trees versus new trees because these trees all drop and re regrow on their own you know 10 episodes from now if we didn't cut down a single tree none of these would actually be here they would have all dropped and little ones would have grown up in their place the forest would just naturally spawn new new trees um, that's right I can't click in here but it just does it automatically so really the herbalist works best in a forest that has has um, densely packed um, trees that are fully grown so one way to overcome that is to put in a second forester lodge into the sphere one that cuts and one that that uh, cuts and plants so that you've got more planting going on than cutting and you'll always have a dense forest here or you take the uh, you know you don't max out the quantity of your forest or you don't max out the quantity of, of the logs that uh, uh, that can be harvested you keep a, your limits set low uh, I have a log limit of 2,000. If I were to take that down to 200, then this would always stay densely packed. And there is that possibility. You know, we could try that to see what it does. I've never really had an herb problem. I've always found that my herb count is, is always reasonable. Where are we now? 31 for 20-ish people. But um, the herbs, from what I understand, the way that they work, you've got basically four food groups. You've got meat, um, vegetables, fruit, and grain, if I recall. In fact, you can see that here in the markets, your market stalls, your proteins, which I believe will also cover milk and cheese in this game, um, your dry goods, which, let's, no, I take it back, I'm over here. Your fruit, your vegetables, your grains, and your proteins. So there's your four food groups in Banished at least in Colonial Charter. I seem to remember there being a fifth one at one time long ago, but maybe I'm remembering that wrong. But your herbs will take the place of one of these. If you have all four groups, you'll have most likely full health. 
we don't have any grains right now. I don't think. I don't think the, uh, uh, where are you at here? The gatherer comes up with a grain. There were wild seeds at one time, and there are wild seeds. So maybe that counts as your grains right now. I'm not sure. Blueberries are your fruit. Don't know what ginger would be. If that's fruit or vegetable. Uh, your roots. Don't know if these would be vegetables or not, but for the most part, you've got your fruits and vegetables covered. I think the wild seeds were meant to uh, to cover the grain part. Um, really, what you want is a wheat field in here, then you're fine. But the herbs will take the place of, of one of those. And so that's why herbs are fairly important to have from the beginning, in that you'll maintain your, uh, your health a little bit better. But uh, you take away all the trees, and you take away... Basically, I don't know if it takes away the herbs as much as it takes away all of the the wild fruits and vegetables and, and whatnot, including the herbs. You know, they will grow best. They, they don't grow well. I don't know if we have an example on this map. They don't grow well where there's no trees. So we do have some, uh, some uh, mushrooms over here, but for the most part, there's nothing in this area. So whereas you get into the trees, then you get the herbs and there should be some onions in there and a few other things. I haven't actually seen wild seeds. Maybe this thing right here. I'm not sure what the blueberries look like. I'm kind of picturing a... There's your onions. What do the blueberries look like? I don't know if we get a good example or not. Yeah, these are flowers. I don't know if you get wild seeds out of these or not. Anyway. Where am I? Whoa, where am I? There I am. So, we'll take the log limit down. That should keep this densely packed. As well as um, pull out the, the stone and iron out of here, which will allow more space for trees to grow. Um, I'll try to remember to include a link to a video that Quill18 did a couple years ago, where he worked through this whole thing. He took a forest that had basically this setup. One forester, we have one of everything that just maintained on its own, just a natural cycle of, of uh, planting and cutting. And then he took another area on the map that was like this, just took an herbalist in there, and that was it. Just let it grow naturally. Nothing else was done to it. He took another area that was kind of like this, except he clear-cut the whole thing, got rid of every original tree, and then allowed the forester to do his thing and fill it back up again with trees and and the one that he clear cut was actually the one that did the best so you can you know, I'll try to remember to include the link to that uh, either in the description of the video down underneath here or down in, in the comment section you can go and pop into that and see what you know the, the work that Quill did to uh, to kind of demonstrate how the herbs seem to actually work but with all of that long-winded description that's just another you know learning tool for for anybody who is new at Banish, just to kind of hear some of the of the uh, you know uh, the techniques. So we are planting our turnips and our cucumbers. We have got fish coming in at what kind of rate? We're coming in. This that's right. This just started, so this isn't going to be reasonable yet. Now um, I know that this dock fishery, when housing and storage is nearby, is capable of quite quite a haul. And what I have found is that haul, that, you know, the 900 to 1,000 fish per, for, per uh, worker, what, what are we calling it, per fisherman, has to do with being educated. It's one of the reasons this time I decided to put the schoolhouse in early. So normally I wait until we have a bit of, a, of an industry and everything built up, and then we... We, uh, we take the plunge of putting in the school and having no laborers for a while. But I'm going to try this one early, right off the bat. Which means we're not going to be able to grow Noble Landing very quickly. So, but that's, that's fine with me. But um, it maintains the ability to have an educated workforce for much... I lost you right here for much longer. Or for, you know, from the very beginning. So this person should be able to bring in about 900 fish a year. When we have an uneducated one, we're probably more on the 500 to 600 per, I'm going to guess. So right from the beginning, less people should be able to do more work, which is really what we need right now, you know, they're early on in this map when there are so few people. So let me look at my notes here and see if I'm done talking for a while. If I am, then I'll start 
you know, kick this game speed up and and uh, I think I am. I think we've got uh, pretty much the groundwork laid for why this is no longer going to be Colonial Charter 1.61. All right, so let's kick the speed up and start throwing some buildings in. Uh, actually, two will be enough for right now. We'll double the speed we were just so we can lay some things out. I want to, in fact, that's one thing I wanted to get done before it actually built. We don't have enough stone to finish. We need to queue up more stone. We did get our other stockpile in. Did we queue up stone over here? We did not, so we got to queue up more stone over here. But I want to go ahead and move this while I can. I would like to see a road shoot through here, right over the top and into this area. And in that episode two that you didn't see, I ended up having to jog it all around here to try to get across, and it didn't look very good. And I didn't want to tear down the uh, blacksmith because it had already built at that point. So let's take the advantage of what we've learned and toss this blacksmith back in one space over. And it will make life so much better. Right there. This has moved over, so now I can shoot through here. This has moved over, so I can shoot through here. I'm much happier now. Um, oh, the town of Rabble just went in. Great. So you are right over here. And yeah, that looked so strange to me in Ramlington because it got stuck right in the middle of the land and you had no sense of a boat being there. I'd never built a town arrival before in that, you know, at that point, so I had no idea it was kind of where the boat landed. It's kind of what it symbolized. So this looks much better over here. That seems more appropriate. So we have got charts. Charts are good. People. Mm, holding still clothed, health. That's not what I want. Population, that's what I was thinking of. Anyway, we're holding at 22 people right now. Food, we have been on a steady climb. Um, really, not much else is going to mean anything at the moment because we haven't got enough uh, history to do us any good. Inventory is helpful, though. We are stacking up the most in cucumbers and turnips right now. Firewood's doing fine, fish are coming in, lots of stuff coming from the gatherers, and we're going to be running out of tools and clothes soon. So, need that going, we need stone. There's our, our first priority. That's why I haven't really sped it up yet, because I want to not let too much time go by in between my talking and figuring out what our priorities are before actually performing those priorities. So let's go and get us the rest of the stone and iron on the mainland here. So I'd say we can go as far as down here and grab this area up in here. That would be good. Um, logs are going to be an issue soon and I'm not going to grab a bunch of forest out of here. We will get into this area though. But before, and we do have a bridge. So actually we do have a bridge. I was going to say before we spend the logs to build a bridge, let's go clean out maybe right over here, but this is closer. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and queue up. Oh, we'll strip out basically everything and maybe this area right there. I'm not going to do a, a large amount. We only have one laborer and one builder. And they do like to prioritize the grabbing resources before building buildings. But we don't actually have enough stone. Just noticing we have two stone here. We were at 43 and now we're down to... 12. So we grabbed that stone and did what with it? Building projects? That's one of two and that's one of two. So there aren't any of the building projects floating around. Where did that stone go? Zero. Was it all in transit? 14? No. Did I read that wrong? I thought it was like 43. Did some of it get consumed in the demolition and rebuilding? I bet you it's in a whole bunch of people's pockets. <laughs> that tends to happen at times. I'm curious. Inventory. How many people have got stone just randomly on them? Huh. Can't even see another person right now to check. Here's somebody. What are you carrying? Logs. Hmm. I don't know. That was really weird. But we've got we've to pull some stone out. So we're going to do that. We're going to get that rebuilt. I guess we can kick the speed up now. I don't think there's anything else that would have been beneficial to have 
done before we did all that. All right, so we got to get the blacksmith going. That's our first priority. So let's both kick the speed up and prioritize this building over everything else. So we do that and take us up to five. While we're doing that, let's lay some other things out. I don't want to put roads around our little pasture right now. We will eventually put roads and maybe four more houses in here or something else here in the middle when we clear this out and we move the farms and the pastures over here. Orchard will leave here. That'll be our starter orchard. We'll put in a much bigger orchard, you know, more of the 11 by 25 size later. But let's, let's see. Let's work with fishing. That one is going to be one of our primary sources of meat. We need to get the hunting in too, but what are you? You're a deer. But let's uh, make this guy a little more efficient. And eventually we're going to have a few more laborers. In fact, how are the laborers doing? School, we only have one in the school right now. So eventually we'll get a, another laborer. Then we had a whole wave of kids coming in at the episode one. So we've got a, we've got a crop coming. Not to worry about that. As long as we don't get anybody dying. Speaking of dying, we may want to put in a uh, uh, cemetery soon too. Anyway, um, to make this a little more efficient, let's get, I'm thinking, storage right here and maybe one more little house right there. That should be fine. You can see the circle out here, so we're not going to encroach on anything. Um, might be nice to see this kind of roll into the into the lake, but no, that'd be fine. It'll roll underneath these houses. This will be on stilts, so that should still look fine. So, tools is low. Yep, we know that. So we want themes, docks, and into the services. Is that what it's called? Storage, industry, and mark and food. Okay. Let's go storage. We'll go the little storage. Now, one thing in case you are new to, to banish or to colonial charter, especially the, the dock buildings, as just a little reminder, a little teaching tool. All of your dock buildings, except for the docks themselves, will have a little white line right there. And it's just by chance, this is one of the few models that let my mouse actually go to where I can touch it. Right. Nope. Can't do it anymore. Oh, I see. It's the angle that I'm at. Now I can, kind of. Right there. <laughs> anyway, as you turn the building around, you'll see the connection points. One of those white lines needs to be touching a dock. And then they can travel from the dock onto that building. So this building right here, for instance, this is the larger storage building, only has it at the doors right there. Nothing on the sides, nothing in the back. Back in Ramlington, I accidentally built it the back side to the dock. And then I accidentally built it one space out. For some reason, they're able to build it, and they're able to fill it. But they're not able to take anything away. So it took about five episodes to delete that building before I finally realized that I had to build a... Uh, hit my E button here, had to build a dock all the way around the outside of this guy to connect to those white lines on that those doors before they could actually delete it. So it is important to remember those white lines, but when you get into a building like the dock workshop, there's a white line right there, and flip it around, a white line right there, we'll call it, we'll call it a gray board, maybe that's a better way of describing it. So they can actually use that dock as a pathway coming in this side and out the other side. So I could build a series of these, boom, 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 and they'll actually travel along all four of them like it was this dock right here, because they can go from connection point to connection point. So that's what we'll actually be doing with these. We'll actually create a dock with the dock workshops. We'll have to put additional docks connecting to them. There is a way to save logs, because the docks, the dock theme in general is very log heavy. It, it just, every building is a whole bunch of logs. There's 45 logs to build this one. We don't even have enough logs in storage right now to build this one building. So it could be a sense of how many logs it really takes to uh, to, to handle a, a water world kind of a map. That's why I picked the marsh. I kind of like the ability to, to demonstrate all the water world stuff, but still have some land, you know, sporadically. So we can kind of island hop around this map and get a good mix of uh, water world features and land features. But let's get back into what I was saying. You see why I don't run at 10? I have a lot of explaining to do. Let's go for that small storage and so he's basically the same on each side. So I'm going to tuck you into that corner right there 
and bring that up to remind me we're building it. And let's grab housing and grab the little shanty. I like the shanties. They take a smaller footprint. The, the uh, let's see, the connection point is only on right there. So we'll turn it, turn my map around, turn it this way. I'm thinking something like that. That keeps us out of the circle. So right in there, so it doesn't affect the affect the, the the fishing area, and it will the the shanties will upgrade. So we can get it's kind of like the uh, the little tiny house. What do they call it? The tiny shack that you can do an upgrade to, and it'll put a second story on it. In fact, let's pop one of those in. I like the look of those. Where to? Let's. Hmm. Now, if I do that, though, it will change. Let's go into here with a tiny house. I don't like that. Right in there. Okay. That'll be the only house we're going to put in this footprint. Otherwise, they can go from here into there. But let's keep this footprint clear. But to the tiny house, it will pop a little story up on top. And kind of a neat look to it. The shanty will do the same thing. So, allow you to get, I think, if one more family member in. Instead of three, it'll go to four. If I'm remembering that correctly. The shanty... Up to four people. So maybe the other will go to five? I don't recall. But at the very least, it will uh, make them warmer and allow you to store more inventory. So there's an advantage of going from the uh, the shanty and upgrading. You'll, you'll use less firewood with that house. But that gives us a house for two potentially or eventually four workers if the kids don't move out in time to run the four jobs that are going to be over here and closer storage so they don't have to walk all the way into there to dump it which means they'll spend more time fishing less time walking so that kind of completes that little area we do need more logs and we are taking this out the farms the farmers will turn into laborers when the crops are done when all the harvesting is finished and Though right now, I was hoping that they would just go straight in and clear these out. We're going to have to actually tell them to while it's still winter time. Because they, I think the game sends them as a higher priority out into uh, gather resources for the community rather than clear the fields. So let's tell them manually this time to clear these fields out. So let's, I'm going to select this one first and this one second, which means they will grab the the last priority that you set. So they're going to go here first and they're going to fall back on this one. When these two are done, they should go back and finish clearing out over here. But you can already see they're going to, you know, they received the order to do this one before I had actually told them to do this. I didn't have it on pause. So they'll all do this. They'll go dump it. They'll come back and clear these out. Then they should finish this out. But point is, they're going to get these done. Then they'll go back to clearing out the uh, more of the stuff that I told them to over here. But that's going to bring our log count up and we'll be able to get these two buildings built. But we should get this guy built first. Oh, we did. Here I'm talking, didn't even notice that. Good. So that means we are out of a builder because we need to maintain. Let's see. Do that. We're going to go with iron tools for now. We need to maintain laborer. The idea is that if a teacher dies, the laborer will become the teacher. If the teachers die, a teacher dies and there's no laborer, then school is out. And these four students will lose all of their training, go to un the status of being uneducated, and, and dive out there and get to work. Which is beneficial to getting more jobs filled, but they will not have the educated status, and we will have lost all the time that we spent trying to get them to that point. So you do want to always maintain one laborer at all times, at the very least. And if you're running at a faster speed, you want several laborers because you can have a die off real quick suddenly three people die all at once and that you know, if one of those was a teacher you're out of luck so we need another builder and I'm thinking the gatherer is the place to do that we've got 3,000 food for 25 people so we don't we're not hurting on food so let's pull this back to one gatherer which allows us to have one builder one laborer again pretty soon we'll see that pop to two laborers and our first child will be out of school and, and we'll be doing fine. But, so we've laid out these two buildings. We don't have enough resources to handle both of them, I don't think. Um, oh, they're over here. 40 logs and 30 logs. Really, 40 logs. 
Was I not reading 45? Uh, storage. This little storage right here needs 40. What needed the 45? Ah, huh, okay. I had a memory of that being 45. Oh well. So we need 70 logs. We have we had 80, so we're going to be fine getting these filled up. Laborers bring all the stuff to the building sites, and the builder actually does the building. So the builder is going to grab the dock, uh, small storage, because that's the building we laid down first. So he's already assigned himself to that. So without using the priority system, they will always jump to the first building you drop down. Unless you have queued up roads. They like their roads. They'll go to the roads first. Or if you queue up a whole bunch of resources, well, actually, that's the laborer's job. The builders will still go to their building site. And if you have a building site that doesn't have, like we did over here, the ability to actually complete the job, like building supplies or lumber, then they will stay assigned to it and just sit there and wait for that building supply to finally be available, which is a problem because they'll be locked up and they won't automatically drop into the next job. So that's why we went ahead and paused this one. So we've got storage available now, which means that these guys right there won't have to go over to here to dump off anymore. They will go into this one, except she already got the order. No, let's follow her. Does she go to there? I don't know. She may have got the order to do that before this opened. So let's watch these guys. They are... Now, they dropped off... Interesting. Walking over here, and they're stopping at other places. When they go to pick up something else, this one may have, or even this one, may have picked up the logs or picked up the tools, which reassigns what's in their hands. They've still got it on their person, but that, you know, so the 26 fish and the tool. So this one, logs. So that person turned where? Did that person turn around and come back this way? Hmm. So we've got fish stored in here. Do we have fish stored in here now? We don't. Why are they bypassing the fish? The the storage over here. They're supposed to be dumping off into here and going back into there. Let's keep that up on the screen. For all I know, they did drop off and someone else popped in and they are walking right past it. That is really odd. We have two different connection points and they're going past it. They're going to make a liar of me yet, aren't they? Yeah, the town's people of Banished have their own uh, set of priorities that sometimes are not logical. They have their own, uh, um, their own mind. They will do what their own will, that's what I want to say. All right, we have a little dock shanty. We could upgrade if we have rope, but we don't, so we're going to leave it the way it is. So we'll get that second story later. And we did queue up a little house over here that didn't get uh, put up on the screen. So that is, that's where... Hmm. That's not where our stone went, though. There's only two stone here. That little curiosity I had about the uh, the blacksmith. Anyway, um, this one, this one. Let's leave that on the screen to remind us that's going on. Meanwhile, the dock shanty. These folks have probably already brought inventory. Yep. Wow, they filled their house fast. There's the uh, storage is nearby, so they just grabbed a whole bunch of goodies and brought it home. They filled that right up. Pretty soon, we will have a baby born to our student and farmer. Anyway, let's clear all of these out. Inventory will be rolling into there soon. There it went. Yep. And let's move on. So, fishing is good. Inventory, we're, we're so low on supplies. Um, we do have one extra laborer now. Good. So someone did graduate. So what to do with that laborer? Let's, for the moment, put that laborer into the Forester Lodge. So we've got all of the... Um, I did that right, right? Yeah, up to four. Yeah. We've got all of the stone and iron ore taken out of this area. We've got our fishing um, enhanced, in a sense. Our farming, this farmer must have started later, because these crops are the same length and time. Or they didn't get around to actually clearing this field to the last possible second, so the planting happened late. That's very possible. So, I see we're already at uh, 30 plus minutes. I'm just wondering where to go from here. I think what I'm going to do is cut this one short, or cut this one now. Actually, this is how long the episodes are supposed to be. 
I just tend to run to 50 to 60 minutes because I, I uh, have a little brain fart and forget to look at my clock. But I um, actually turned the timer on this time, so we're good to go. So I think we're going to call this one done here. Next time we will do all the different jobs and, and kind of fill things in and, and get back to where episode 2 would have ended. And yeah, so this is going to be a fun series. I'm pretty sure of that. Let's call this one done. This is the Noble Rambler in Noble Landing. And uh, hit the like and subscribe down there if you would. I thank you much, and I'll catch you next time, folks. Bye-bye.